Good afternoon and is always welcome to St. Ambrose. Our Mass intention this afternoon is for our dear Margaret Lester, and we are very excited to be um, having the first Mass of the Trilogy as we uh, say thank you with deepest love and gratitude to Deacon Al. Um, let's give him a round of applause to begin with. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Let us rise and join together in singing our opening number 29, Glory in the Cross. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. It's, uh, it's a great thing for us to be together, to be able to come together and to be grateful for one another. It's a great thing to know each other, even a little bit. The Lord Jesus calls us into this relationship which we have where our faith makes us one. Let us present ourselves gratefully and humbly before him now, asking forgiveness and healing and strength. You are set to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. To intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, woe to the complacent in Zion, lying upon beds of ivory, stretched comfortably on their couches. They eat lambs taken from the flock and calves from the stall, improvising to the music of the harp. Like David, they devise their own accompaniment They drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the best oils. Yet they are not made ill by the collapse of Joseph. Therefore, now they shall be the first to go into exile, and their wanton reverie shall be done away with. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the Lord's word is praise the Lord, my soul, praise the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. But you, man of God, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life, 
to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate for the noble confession, to keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, to whom no human being has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said to his Pharisees, There was a rich man, rich man who dressed in purple garments and fine linen, and dined sumptuously each day. And lying at his door was a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who would gladly have eaten his fill of the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even used to come and lick his sores. When the poor man died, he was carried away by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. And from the netherworld, where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he cried out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am suffering torment in these flames. Abraham replied, my child, remember that you received what was good during your lifetime, while Lazarus likewise received what was bad. But now he is comforted here, whereas you are tormented. Moreover, between us and you, a great chasm is established to prevent anyone crossing who might wish to go from our side to yours or from your side to ours. He said, then I beg you, Father, send him to my, brother's, my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that they may warn them, lest they too come to this place of torment. But Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. He said, oh no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Then Abraham said, if they will not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Well, that was frightful, wasn't it? I mean, you think about it, it's, it, it's, it was pretty shocking. I mean, it really puts you in your place when you think about it. And there are several points of view that can be discussed about today's gospel parable regarding the rich man and Lazarus. But today, I would like to focus on its blunt and somewhat alarming end. 
because I think it has something important to say to us about the way that we live. We're told of this rich man who feasted sumptuously, not just feasted well, but lavishly every day, not a care in the world, as happy as he could be. And based on the beggar, Lazarus, who was lying at his door covered with sores, we can assume he wasn't a caring person. He was selfish, self-absorbed with his wealth and with his status. When he died, he discovered to his disappointment that he should have lived differently. Whoops, a little too late. He was in torment, whereas the beggar, the blind beggar, who once sat at his gate was in glory with Abraham. Now the rich man realized all too late that there was nothing that he could do about his situation. But he begs Abraham to send Lazarus to warn his brothers so that they could change and avoid this cruel fate. Now Abraham tells them, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. The rich man says, no, they won't listen. They're stubborn. How many of us can relate to that? But they would if someone who is risen from the dead. Now here comes the disturbing end. Abraham says, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone who were raised from the dead. And Abraham's statement was a really blunt, honest, and straightforward warning. We, too, should listen to Moses and the prophets. To the Jewish people and to Jesus, they represented represented all that God had revealed, all that God has told us through the prophets in history. The same is true for us. Moses and the prophets are for us is all we need to we need to find revealed in the Bible and all that the spirit reveals in our hearts as well as we live our as we live our lives God is trying to get our attention he's speaking to us through the prophets and through the scriptures and through the events of our lives. What is to listen to? It varies with each individual person. And sometimes we're hard of hearing. Actually, a lot of the times we're hard of hearing. God might be telling us that there is issues in our relationships that we need to face that there is someone who is hurt, that has hurt us, and we need to reconcile and to forgive. That we are unhappy in our job, and it might be a time for a change. That we're spending time in the wrong places, and we need need more time with the ones that we love. That there is someone in our life who needs help and is waiting for our aid and support. How little, whatever, it could be small or it could be huge. Each one of us must ask, what is God saying to me? What is God telling me I need to do? And that should be a daily thing. We get up and we should speak with God, relate to him from the moment we get up. Many times we fail to listen either because we're hard-headed or simply stubborn. And we all fall in that category. There's not one of us that takes, that's an exception. I think for many of us, 
there are two principal reasons. One is time and the other is fear. We assume that there will always be more time. We say to ourselves, I know what God wants me to do, but I'll face that problem tomorrow. I'll get around to it. Or I could do it later. Yeah, I need help. Yeah, but yeah. The problem with the excuse of time is that it often double crosses us. What's possible today might not be possible tomorrow, and it could be too late. The opportunity we can grab now could evaporate with a change in ourselves or in someone else. The window of opportunity can all too quickly fade away and close. And it's going to be way too late. Just ask the rich man. And the other reason is fear. We know that if we listen to what God is asking us to do, it might be too difficult. We might be afraid to face it, to swallow our pride and our self-absorption, to extend and think of ourselves and be true to ourselves. If we really believe that what is being asked of us comes from God, then we need not pour out, or we need not, all we need to do is trust and have faith in him. He will not ask us to do something and then lead us out into the desert to die. We should follow his direction with confidence, with trust, with love, and without fear. We are the ones that the, is the obstruction with the fear. And we have to conquer ourselves in certain times, and in certain things, in certain situations, with our thoughts and our behaviors and the kind of person or people that we are. God is speaking to us all the time. He's communicating things in our hearts. He speaks to us through his son, Jesus, and he speaks through his word. We need to listen. We need to listen now without fear. The only danger is to go on with our lives as if everything is fine. And we know it isn't. Everybody has something. We must not be like the rich man in the parable, feasting, moving along without a care in the world, when in fact something needs to change in the way we care and the way we love, in the way we treat other people. We cannot assume that God will send an angel to tap us on the, on the shoulder, nor will he rise up someone from the dead to tell us what we must do. We need to listen. He's telling us. God is already telling us what to do. All we must do is listen and respond today. Let's stand now and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, our Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, true God and not made, consubstantial with the Father, to whom all things are made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Lord of the Father and the Son is the Lord of the Lord of God, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> grateful for the gifts that God has already given us and conscious of our needs, we present our prayers now. For Pope Francis and the church leaders, for priests, deacons, and religious, especially Monsignor Mike, Father Albert, Deacon Al and Deacon Hal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for the salvation of the whole world and for the softening of hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For recognition of the glory of the Lord in the changing of the seasons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, poor and discouraged, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, for those in our book of intentions, and those calling, requesting prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese, our sister parish, and our St. Ambrose parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For Margaret Lester, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's call upon the, the intercession of our Blessed Mother, saying, Hail Mary, Hail Mary full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing song number 471, I Has Not Seen.
Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and above all his holy church. Must be my mustache. <laughs> Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all holiness may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. just. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your ch children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that the people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will
will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity together, Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph has passed, with the blessed apostles, St. Ambrose, and all the saints who are pleased with throughout the ages. We may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Thank you for your generous support last week of the collection to the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. Over the past year, we have raised $1,967 to support those living in poverty in the United States. RCIA classes for those inquiring about the Catholic Church start this weekend on Sunday, September 25th, after the 9 a.m. Mass in the Rectory Chapel. Please see Eileen or Father Albert with any questions. This weekend is Volunteer Weekend. There are volunteer sheets on the table in the vestibule. We are asking everyone to volunteer to do something to help build up our family in Christ. Please place your volunteer sheets in the basket on the table, mail them in, or drop them off at the rectory. Thank you in advance for the generosity of your time and talents. There will be a reception between the masses on Sunday this weekend for Deacon Al, who is retiring. Along with our coffee and donuts, there will be a special cake for Deacon Al. Please stop by the table in the vestibule to sign a card and his photo and help us wish Deacon Al a very happy, blessed retirement. Included with the bulletin this week is a letter to the faithful from Bishop Bradley regarding Proposition 3. We encourage everyone to read it and pass it on to your friends and relatives. Together, we can defeat Proposition 3. Have a blessed week. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. It is said that evil or uh, evil may seem to thrive in the world, not because there are so many bad people, but because the good people are indifferent. That rich man in the Gospel reading was not a terribly bad man, but he was indifferent. This weekend, we are here to celebrate our deacon, Deacon L. He's a, he's a wonderful man. <laughs> and he has been very, uh, very supportive Actually, uh, all the clergy here, I've not had any trouble with any of them. So they've been very uh, supportive and uh, very encouraging. Actually, uh, when Deacon L turned in uh, his re request for retirement, I happened to be the bishop and, and uh, I told Bishop, can we uh, can, can we reverse that for the next five years? He's still very strong. <laughs> <laughs> then the bishop said, oh, sure, if, if he can. <laughs> so I don't know if, uh, will you decide today to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so any. <laughs> Thank you, no. Okay, so anyhow. We just want to celebrate uh, our deacon and to wish him uh, uh, all the best. And I would like to invite him uh, up front here. Then we'll all extend our hands towards him and we'll have a song for him uh, and a blessing for him. Well, before you do that, if I may, thank you. I can't express what's in my heart how happy this parish has made me in this last five years. I left a large parish at St. Joseph in Battle Creek, and when Father O'Leary asked me if I would come here, I mean, it was a no-brainer because he asked me, and I, I love the man, and he was my first pastor. And also, uh, Deacon Hal, 
he and I were ordained together. We went through so many years of formation. Um, and I, like I said, it was a no-brainer. I blinked my eyes and yes. But I, leaving St. Joseph, as large parish as it was, I mean, you get to know everybody. And I was there for 15 years. But, you, you know, you, there's, as the, the five years, the short years that I've been here, I look at all of you, and, and I, most of you, or a lot of you are, were here when I started, and I see some new faces. And um, I'm the one that is enriched. Thank you. Deacon Al, you have been a blessing to all of us. Let us join together, rise up and extend our arms and join together in singing number 371, <laughs> May the Road Rise Up, the Irish Blessing. <laughs> Christ, renew your priests in your love. Help them to devote themselves more deeply to building up your body, the church, so that we may all become one in your life and love. Let your Holy Spirit rekindle the fire of your love within our priests. Help them to set the world on fire through the faithful practice of their priestly ministry. May we support and encourage our priests with our prayer as they strive to be good, holy, compassionate, and inspiring priests for all who are entrusted to your care. May we grow to be faithful and joyful witnesses to your presence in our world. With your word of blessing, help all our families to encourage each other to respond to your invitation to follow me and our unique vocations. May many more young men respond to your call to serve your church in priestly ministry for our diocese. Loving and merciful God, since the beginning of time, you have been making all things new. Call our world back to you. Deepen our faith, renew our priests, and guide our entire diocese priests and people through this life and into the everlasting life of heaven. May we 
proclaim with all our hearts, You are my Lord and my God. As you renew us in your life-giving love, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 734, Hail Redeemer, King Divine. Amen. 